Greetings, beloved. God is truly good. And now Family Community Church of Fresno presents Pastor Chester McGinsey. Pastor McGinsey is an anointed voice to the nations with a clear message, building God's kingdom and empowering God's people. Today's teaching will build you, strengthen you, and unlock some kingdom principles that will give you access to the life God originally designed you to live. You'll be challenged to possess the promises of God for your life. And now, please join Pastor McGinsey for this powerful and dynamic message. Two passages of scripture in your hearing this morning, one from the new and one from the old. First Corinthians chapter one, <coughs> and 1 Kings chapter 18. You can find one, you put your finger on the other. We'll start with 1 Corinthians chapter one and start in verse number 10. You'll find these words. Now I plead with you, brother, and by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you will be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment or purpose. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Cleo's household that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you say, I am of Paul, I am of Paulus, I am of Cephas, or am I of Christ? Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? First King, chapter 18, starting at verse 15 you'll find these words. Then Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, I will surely present myself to him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Then it happened when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said to him, is that you, O troubler of Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have, and that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have followed the Baals. I want to stop right there and talk to you from this thought, united in the body of Christ. Right. Right. <coughs> A phrase that many of us have heard all our lives is, united we stand, and divided we fall. There are those that source that phrase to Matthew 12, 25. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. One of the greatest threats to this goal, goal of being united is trouble. Trouble, trouble. Anxiety, distress, misfortune, suffering, worry, trouble. Now I've discovered that every nation, city, organization, or movement, every family and church either has are or will struggle with the problem of internal trouble. Not only is there trouble on the outside, but there's trouble on the inside. Many internal conflicts result from a struggle over control. I've learned that if everyone would give the Lord control over whatever they're responsible for, many internal conflicts can be eliminated. Amen. What the Apostle Paul and the prophet Elijah knew was, without the Lord's leading, there will always be unresolved trouble and a lack of unity. Now, I've also discovered that at least three things that causes us 
not to be united in our family and in our churches. First of all is trouble caused by division. <laughs> For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, that those by the household of Cleo, Cleo's household, that they were contentions among you. This church at Corinth was in a sad state. Their fellowship among the believers had deteriorated to such a degree that it was about to crumble and collapse. There were severe divisions and dissension in the ranks. There were attackings and competitive posturing and complaining and differings of opinions and envy and strife and grumbling and murmuring and power struggles, quarreling and verbal accusations. Believers stood against believers and there was no give in any corner. In other words, nobody wanted to give in. Everybody wanted their own way and nobody could see the other person's point of view. <clears throat> Disaster was about to strike and this church was divided and a severe split was threatening. This was the first problem that Paul had to deal with. There were other problems in this church, other matters that had to be handled, but the people could not handle them unless the people were united in one spirit and one mind. Amen. The ministry and mission of this church could not uh, effectively go on until the people learned to stand together. Their worship service was affected. Their evangelism ministry was affected. Their prayer life of the church and individuals were affected. Their spiritual growth was affected simply because of the division that existed in that church. Divisions were caused by believers following different leaders. In all of this, people were guilty of putting the messenger ahead of the message. They were being selfish and creating a me and my church rather than Jesus Christ's church. Uh, this church was splitting over who the leader should be. Paul had to bring them back to who the leader really was. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the true founder and head of the church. Jesus declared upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This Corinthian church had formed cliques. I said this Corinthian church <laughs> had formed some cliques around certain people of the church. In one group, they were the proud pupils of Paul. In another group, they were the adorning admirers of Apollos. Then there were some who liked Peter and Cephas. And like always, there were those who claimed to be on nobody's side and they believed they were the only true followers of Christ. Division within the church is one of the most serious problems a church could ever face, if not the most serious. Divisions can devastate the church's fellowship the church's worship and the church's mission and the witness to the world unless it's resolved quickly. No matter how much church, how much a church has going for it, division can render it ineffective. The Bible declares that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Amen. The second thing that causes us to be, uh, not to be united in our families, in our church, is trouble caused by immaturity. <laughs> As the Apostle Paul was giving the Corinthians strong advice and recommendation, he's urging them to act upon the preaching and the teaching that he has already given. In a very serious manner, he, Paul begins to say, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you would be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment or purpose. As we stated earlier, this church was young and immature and it had problems. It was wrecked by divisions. The members of this church were fighting with each other. There were those who were backbiting and backstabbing others who didn't even agree with 
their point of view. There were people who were murmuring and complaining because things weren't exactly how they would like them to be. There were those who were not worshiping because the preachers, they wanted to be up preaching wasn't preaching. Although they were in the church, yeah, they showed up, but the church was not in them. This was a sign of spiritual immaturity among the members of this church. Paul urged this church that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and with the same purpose. Paul's exhortation to the church was to follow, amen, and to allow no dissension or division. These dissensions were not only outside the church, but they found their way into the church. The Corinthian church was not working to bring peace and love and brotherhood to the world. No, this immature, divided church was, uh, was not out working and evangelizing the world for Christ, but they were on the inside of the four walls, fuming, fuming and fighting with one another. This church was struggling with the trouble caused by immaturity. As earlier, we stated that there were cliques in this church. Cliques, for the most part, make a person a man follower. This is tragic because a genuine believer is always baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and not in the name of any man to follow at all. And I say that in the neutered sense. We, 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 we ought to confess loyalty to the Lord Jesus Christ and him only. Uh, we ought to stand for Christ and his righteousness. Uh, we can easily get our eyes on other folk and get them off Jesus. We can become followers of men and not the Lord. Uh, that happens, uh, amen, at Corinth when they lost sight of who Jesus Christ really was. They, they began to focus on the personalities of the people around them rather than on who saved them. They began to focus on the leaders of the church instead of the true and only founder of the church, Jesus Christ himself. They began to focus on what they were getting out of church instead of what they were putting and getting, putting into the church. The people of Corinth began to focus on problems they were facing with others instead of focusing on the problem solved. They began to urge and fuss and even began to take each other to court. We also can get our eyes onto other priorities. Even in this church, we can get our eyes on the wrong priority. The priorities of the Corinthian believers began, amen, to be about what they desired. They began to live according to their appetites, thus becoming carnal rather than spiritual people. This led to the abuse of spiritual gifts and the abuse of the Lord's Supper. Folk coming, living any kind of way, just walking up, taking and partaking of the Lord's Supper. Knowing their lives do not line up with the Word of God, no way, no kind of how, but they felt emboldened enough to come and sit up in God's house and partake of the Lord's Supper. I'm mighty afraid that some of these same situations that existed in the early 21st century church are still relevant in our churches today. Right. Paul will have us to see that not only are such, amen, displays of immaturity and division contrary to the gospel, they should be set aside by the gospel. Our churches ought to be, ought not to be divided because we have one Messiah and one Savior. Our churches ought not to be divided because we have one Lord, not two, one faith, not two, one baptism, not two. Our churches ought not to be divided because we have one mission, and that is to go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. There's nothing wrong with little programs and little this and that, but we can't lose sight of the one mission that the church of Jesus Christ had. 
Amen. Our church ought not to be divided because we have one message. Yeah. And it is the message of the cross. It is the message of the cross. I am, Paul says, for I am determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I remember several Sundays back we were talking about Paul going up there on Athens Hill and messing, excuse me, with some of them Greeks and Epicureans and some of them Stoics. And he tried to philosophize with them about religion and all that. And they gave Paul his hat and sent him on back down the hill. But Paul wouldn't got himself together. And this time when he comes back, he says, I'm not coming back to philosophize with you anymore about this unknown God on this statue. No, 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 no. I come knowing one thing. I'm fully determined that there's one Jesus Christ, him crucified. That's all I'm going to preach. That's all I'm going to teach. I got it straight and I got it right. I, I, I've only got one message to preach. And that's Jesus Christ and him crucified. Whether you're an Epicurean or Stoic, it doesn't make any difference. You better come to the point to know that Jesus Christ <laughs> is the answer for all of our trouble. Amen. I want you to know this morning that united we stand and divided we fall. If we wish to stand against Satan, then the church needs to remain united. Ecclesiastes 4.12, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withhold him and three cord, a strand is not quickly broken. Mm -hmm. There is strength in unity, strength in number, and if we desire to impact our community and our city and our world, we need to learn to stand together on the gospel of Jesus Christ. It shows that we have matured. The final thing that causes us not to be united in our families and our church is trouble caused by compromise. Hmm. <laughs> Elijah wanted to talk to us here for a moment in 1 Kings 18. Then it happened when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said to him, Is that you, O troubler of Israel? <laughs> this text may seem strange, strange when we're talking about a man of God be, because as Christians, we have been instructed that we are to be peacemakers. Did not Jesus say on the Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Amen. But what we misunderstand sometimes is that peace does not mean that Elijah was in agreement and that he was in harmony with the spirit and the attitude of his day. In fact, it was said of Jesus on multiple occasions there was a division because of him. Now, we could say there was a contention, All right. there was an irritation, there was a disturbance, or we could just say there was some trouble. Jesus said of himself in Matthew 10, 34, do not think that I've come to bring peace on earth. I mm. did not come to bring peace, but a soul. Mm -hmm. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemy will be those of his own household. In other words, Jesus said, I've come to cause some trouble. I came to disturb you. I, I came to start a spiritual fight in your life. I came, amen, to force you to choose sides. Jesus was a troublemaker. Elisha was a troublemaker. And he also was trying to force, amen, Israel to choose sides. Now, don't get it twisted. Elijah was not causing trouble in Israel, but causing trouble to Israel. Jesus was not causing trouble in the body of Christ, but he was causing trouble to the body of Christ. Elijah was, Elijah's very existence agitated and irritated Ahab and especially Jezebel. Elijah made Ahab miserable and Elijah made, was a man of God who spoke the truth without compromise, without fear, and without favor. 
There is such a tremendous need for men and women like Elijah today to stand up in pulpits and in homes and in schools and in the White House and, and declare, thus saith the Lord. Sadly today, the attitude that prevails in our land is to be tolerant, to be agreeable, to be harmonious, to be peaceful, and to be open-minded, accept anything and everything. Be a peacemaker. Don't rock the boat. Just ease up, Pastor. Get a life. Just go along to get along. Now, excuse me this morning just for a moment. But I can't help it because I feel the Holy Spirit's anointing in me. It's that troublemaker anointing. Uh, you see, I, I didn't come out today just to have fellowship with some good people of an alliance. Uh, I'm not interested in making everybody happy. I'm not trying to find a happy medium where we all can get along and just all agree to what's being said. The Holy Spirit woke me up this morning and he prepared me to come and to draw a line in the house of God. Draw a line between right and wrong. Draw a line between true and false. And draw a line between sin and righteousness. And draw a line between a dead religion that won't do anything for you but make you feel good on Sunday but leave you on Monday through Saturday. Now draw a line between that dead religion and the power of Almighty God. There's a distinction with a difference. Far too long the church has tried to blend in, go along, get along, to be tolerant and not to be judgmental. And the church has become all mixed up and confused and anything and everything of the world that's perverse and ungodly has slipped its way into the church and we're sitting around clapping our hands and thinking it's all right. We have women, we have put up the worship of Baal, the worship of man, the worship of man's thoughts, the worship of man's tolerances. Now, some of you that, amen, used to uh, chop cotton may say, Pastor, you're getting a little close here. Huh? Amen. You're, you're, you're holding a little close to the road. Uh, if you chop cotton, you know what I'm talking about. But, but I know, I said, I know that I'm telling the truth. Now, don't get mad at it. I said, don't get mad at it if I'm telling the truth. But the church today has allowed Baal worship to come into the church and we've accepted it and we just go along with it and we just keep our mouth shut about it. We allow adultery and fornication and gambling and homosexuality and pornography and shacking up and social drinking and wife swapping. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm talking about Baal worship up in the house of God and we have no problem with it at all. And now the church, and now the church is given into the trouble of the cause of compromise and has opened her arms to embrace religions that don't even give recognition to Jesus Christ as the only true Son of God. I declare they are anti-God. They don't even recognize the deity of Jesus Christ. They just call Jesus a good man. They just call him a prophet or something. They promote a Godhood of self and reject the blood of Jesus Christ as the only remedy for our sins. I can hear man. I can hear you telling me, preacher, 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 you better be careful. You be, hey man, you're gonna stir things up in here. You're gonna catch a case if you're not careful. Good. Give me the case. I'm ready. I'm praying before I finish that the whole lot of people will be stirred up, getting mad at me. That's all right. My name is Chester, but today you can call me Troublemaker. Amen. I didn't come to cause trouble in the body of Christ, but I come to cause trouble to the body of Christ. There are all kinds of people in the world. There are sweet people and kind people and considerate people. There are caring and compassionate people who will give you the shirt off their back. However, there are even some people in the church that are hateful, inconsiderate, mean, spiteful. They're rude and selfish, and they don't care about anybody but themselves. These people are not happy unless they're tearing up something, causing divisions and disunity in the body of Christ. They may do it in a sophisticated swagger. No, no, they don't stab you in the back like that. They come up, oh, excuse me, Ooh, and just push you over. <laughs> you okay? You feel all right? Hey, oh, yeah, okay, all right. God bless you, go on, but you got to be careful. They're, they're so committed to this attitude of behavior and lifestyle 
that they're Satan's troublemaker. Whenever you see them coming, you hear yourself say, here comes trouble. I just wonder what the devil's crowd have to say about you and me. I just wonder if we carry enough Holy Spirit fire on the inside of us and that the power of God is so prevalent on the inside of us that we disrupt, that we disturb the devil's agenda in our life and disturb the devil's agenda in our church. Now, when the seven sons of Siva tried to cast out a demon in a, in a man, amen, the demon spoke up and says, Jesus, we know. Paul, we know. But who are you? Who are you? Coming up here, toting your Bible, talking about I'm casting you out. I'm casting you out. The man possessed with that demon, stripped that man's clothes off, ran him outside and down the street. Amen. What, what, what that demon was saying was, Jesus, Come on. has made trouble for us. Mm -hmm. And he's on our hit list. Right. Yeah. We know we better be on the watch out for Jesus when he comes our way. Come on. The apostle Paul is on our hit list too. He, he, he calls trouble for us all over the country, turning the whole thing upside down. But we don't see your name anywhere on this <laughs> hit list. I just wonder if you and I make the devil's hit list this morning. <laughs> Or have we given in to the trouble caused by compromise? I'm trying to close this thing out now, here. I don't know about you, but I want to be known as a troublemaker for the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. Not in the body, but through the body of Jesus Christ. So, yeah, as I'm led by the Holy Spirit, I, I want to make trouble for the devil. I want to make it hard for people to go to hell. I want to make it hard for you to stay sick because I believe in the healing power of Almighty God and I want to preach on healing. I, I want to make it hard for the discouraged and the depressed to stay discouraged and depressed. I want them to see them with hope. I want to see them with a smile on their face again. The devil did that to you. The devil put that frown on your face. The devil did that. Huh? Amen. I want to see hope in your life once again as I'm led by the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. I, I want to make it hard for hypocrites to feel comfortable in the house of God. I want to preach truth no matter where it lands. Amen. I want to look you right on the eyeball and say, thus saith the Lord. I want to make it hard for the false prophet, the hireling, to fatten their pockets by preying on the ignorance or the simplicity or the generosity of God's people. I don't want anybody walking away from here today wondering about what I'm talking about. I've been given a mandate from the Holy Spirit of God to make the message clear, to lift up the downcast, to encourage the discouraged, to warn the wicked to flee of the wrath of God to come. Now you may call me old fashioned. You may call me old fashioned. And I say that I'm stuck in the mud. I'm old fashioned and I'm stuck in the mud. But I don't see it like that. I see that I'm stuck in the blood. I can't get away from the message of the cross. I can't get away from the savior who shed his blood for me. It was the blood that saved me. It was the blood that delivered me. I sure enough delivered me. It was the blood that healed me and got me up off my sick bed. And it was the blood that broke Satan's power over my life. And boy, did he have a grip. But the power of the blood of Jesus Christ came and broke me and set me free. It was the blood. Nothing but the blood. And as I said earlier, the Holy Spirit has me here today to make trouble for the devil. I can't tell you in one certain time that there's only one way to be saved, and that is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who died for your sins. I came to tell you that hell is real, and you can spend eternity either in heaven or hell. You can't make a both, and you can't miss a both. The condition you die in, or he finds you on that great day in the morning, is where you're going to spend eternity forever and ever and ever. There are multitudes in hell today because they rejected the love of the Savior. Yes, I love you too much not to tell you the truth. Amen. I know there's a damnable doctrine being preached out there today called the gospel of inclusion. And it says that everybody is already saved. You're born, as, amen, you're just born into salvation. Because Jesus died, that's already it. This doctrine says that God loves you too much and there's no way God would send you to a horrible place called hell. And that part is actually right. Because God's not sending anybody to hell. You send yourself to hell when you reject your son, Jesus Christ. This, 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 
Amen. This uh, deception rips the heart out of evangelism. The very heartbeat of evangelism is the recognition that mankind is a sinner and that all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. That bears repeat. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that our sins have, amen, have separated us from God and now we're condemned to hell. But by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as our sin sacrifice, we are forgiven and we are redeemed. By believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as our sin sacrifice, we are forgiven and we are redeemed. We have been justified and we have been sanctified. One day we're going to be glorified. And through faith in Jesus' sacrifice and his blood that was shed on the cross for us, we have been brought into a right relationship with God. That, amen. And we have been prepared and we have been prepared for heaven. Oh, what you say? What you say? We've been prepared for heaven. We've been prepared for heaven. Amen. You say, preacher, 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 you're preaching too hard. Or do you want me to say it this way? Preacher, you're preaching too harsh. Well, I'm not running for office this I'm not trying to get your vote. My aim is not to make friends with you, but to make disciples for Jesus Christ. Jesus says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I want you to be like Elijah. I, I want you to be a Holy Spirit troublemaker. Hey, man, I'm trying to close, but I, I feel a little more stirring coming up on the inside of me. I, I sense the rumbling in my spirit. I sense the spirit of godly men and godly women being agitated and getting stirred up. And that's a good thing. I, I believe there's hey, man, we're standing on the edge of somebody's breakthrough. I believe there's a wave of God's power that's getting ready to hit this place. I believe there's a powerful anointing in this place right now. God about to raise up some modern day Holy Spirit troublemakers. We're going to leave this place today and we're going to shake it up every place we go. In our homes, we're going to bring some trouble. In our church, we're going to bring some trouble. In our community, we're going to bring some trouble. Everywhere I go, I want to shake it up. Amen. Amen. I don't want to make it comfortable. I want to make more people grow to be holy. Holy before we love. I love you too much. I'm not going to soft soap and sugar coat it or any of that. I'm going to preach just the way it comes right out of the word of God. Amen. Look, you scream down. You can get mad at me. I'll tell you like mommy used to tell me. I thought she'd give me a good whipping. She said, just scratch and get glad. I know when you get whipped all over, just scratch until you feel better. Amen. Scratch until you feel better. Amen. Because I'm going to preach. I'll keep on preaching the word of God. There's a spirit that is trying to destroy God's people and destroy the church and we got to have some spiritual backbone it's enough of this limp wrist to get so through the tulip amen jelly back preacher talking about the word of god we need some soldiers to stand up that believe the word of god believe what's in this book and preach it and don't worry about what's going to happen so and so going to leave so and so going to stop giving so and so going to be mad let them be mad to refuse to give in to divisions when they come around you in the church and in your family. Refuse to give in to that. Amen. Get rid of the immaturity to grow up. Paul said when I was a child, I acted as a child. I grew right. as a child. Right. Amen. And then stop giving in to compromise. We don't have to go along to get along. Regardless of the consequences, stand. Stand strong for God. Express to God, make me a Holy Spirit troublemaker. I don't know about you, but I want hell to go on high alert every time my feet hit the floor. I want hell to go on high alert every time hell sees me walking up to this pulpit. Hell, the red buttons are flashing in hell. He's about to preach the word of Jesus. Every time hell sees me get down on my knees and begin to hurt, I want hell to be terrified. 
Amen. Elijah turned the whole nation back to God because he stood up on the boldness of God's word. He didn't worry about the division that was being called by Jezebel and her daddy. Listen, he didn't care about any of that mess, that immaturity, amen, and that compromise. He stood flat-footed. He says, amen, united we stand and divided we fall. I'm telling you, God is looking for people today that's willing to stand up and be all that God intends for them to be. There's a time in our church. Hear me good. There's a time in our church, and it's right now. Right. And when I say this church, that's all local churches across the land. Come on, the, self, the devil is busy yes. tearing up church, yes. bringing foolishness into the body of Christ, yes. all kind of crazy doctrines. And excuse me, I'm not here to run anybody down. I'm not here to hate on anybody. But you start hearing people talking about Jesus was black, the no. prophets all were black. Yeah. They're getting that out of some other Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Last year, I preached a sermon. I had PowerPoint presentations. I came out of Genesis, I believe it was 10 and 11. I showed you where all the nations of the world, all the races of the world came from. I walked you through it. A, B, C, all the way through Z. Some of you were falling asleep, but I, amen, I stayed right with it. Amen. And I, I showed you where, amen, the Anglo race came from, where the black race, and the sons and the grandsons of Noah, how they populated the world, how the Tower of Bevel just spread them all out. I showed you all that in the Word of God. And then you're going to let some <clears throat> come up in here and begin to tell you something, and you're going to walk out because it sounds good to your ears. You better get right with God. Get right with God. Stay with the word of God. Earnestly contend for the faith that was once given to the saints. I'm not hating on nobody. I'm not talking about anybody. I'm just talking about the truth of God's word. Amen. Give God a hand. I'm trying to stop. God is the master. God is the master. Oh my God. God is Division, immaturity, and compromise destroys families, destroys churches and organizations, destroys governments, movements. But if we're not clear to what God's word has to say about it, we'll be messed up. Be a trouble for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thank you for joining Pastor Chester McGinsey for this powerful teaching. Family Community Church of Fresno is empowering millions of people around the world through dynamic preaching and teaching, humanitarian aid, and many other ministry efforts. For additional information and resources from Family Community Church, please visit www.familycommunitychurch.com or call 559-323-5002. We look forward to serving you in the kingdom.